G'day guys and gal. The arrival of the Tyranids was probably the shittiest thing that's happened in the setting of Warhammer 40k. Like, full stop. Life was hard enough as it was. Big ass orc armies, literal demons of hell, space elf rapists, and a legion of soulless robots who use their shattered gods as Pokemon. A lot of bad stuff going on. So almost everyone was universally pissed when the space bugs of death arrived. Seemingly endless fleets of ravenous, rapidly evolving killing machines, hell bent on cracking you open and devouring your biomass. Needless to say, the arrival of the Tyranids sparked some pretty strong reactions. But surprisingly, not all of them were as negative as the Imperium or the Eldar. Just a quick reminder, the 300k subscriber Major Kill Space Spartans only have a couple more days until they're gone forever. This is a physical mini sent to your door. The STL isn't available because that's how limited it is. Comes with three head variants and three weapon variants all in the one purchase. It's $30 Australian, which is like $20 American right now, and it ships worldwide no matter where you are. So grab him while he's around. This is genuinely one purchase you will not regret. Link in description below. Today we're going to go over each of the main race and factions reaction to the arrival of the Tyranids, looking at their first encounter with the space bugs and how they view them. Let's get into it. Before we look at the reactions, what actually caused the Tyranids to arrive in the already incredibly shitty, competitive and crowded Milky Way? Well, there's a few theories, such as the Tyranids running from an even greater threat, or the surviving old ones creating the Tyranids to wipe the galaxy clean so they can start again. But what we know for sure is that the Tyranids have consumed multiple galaxies, always seeking their next meal. Whenever someone leaves the Milky Way, they either get eaten by Tyranids, or they see a bunch of Tyranids and say fuck that before heading back to the Milky Way. Way. The thing that caught their eye was during the Horus Heresy, a mini Astronomicon called the Pharos device got overloaded and destroyed, causing a huge shiny blimp to appear in the warp. This blimp was detected by the Tyranids, telling them that the Milky Way had sentient life in it, hence a large source of food for their gobs. Can't really blame them, the galaxy is literally called the Milky Way after all, sounds pretty delicious. So they begun the slow but steady jog over, taking them roughly 10,000 years for their vanguard war fleets to arrive. However, some scout fleets had arrived thousands of years earlier, but went into hibernation. The first documented people to encounter the Tyranids were actually Inquisitor Ravenor and his retinue due to some time travel shenanigans, allowing them to move forward a few hundred years when the Tyranids had arrived. They only fought against some low level rippers and gaunts, yet they described them as the single most horrifying enemy they had fought against. And when they returned to their time, they were genuinely like, shit, the galaxy is screwed. The first genuine encounter with the Tyranids that the Imperium had was when the planet of Tyran was the first world to be consumed, hence the name Tyranids. Tyran and the following planets they got nommed on reacted with complete horror before they were consumed. The Tyranids were nothing like they had ever fought before. There was no raiding, capturing or subjugating. It was complete and tonal genocide. Every man, woman, child, baby, dog and cat were torn to shreds without hesitation. The Tyranids also had an ability called the Shadow in the Warp, which was like a blanket that dampens the warp, making warp travel and astropath messaging very difficult. As such, all the doomed worlds could do before they died was send out distorted and desperate last messages that would reach the Imperium way after the sender had been digested by the Hive Fleet. Eventually, the Tyranids attacked Ultramar itself, coming into direct combat with the Ultramarines. Whilst the galaxy still had a lot to learn about the Tyranids, the Tyranids had a lot to learn about the galaxy. Rule number one, don't attack Ultramar. It never ends well. Hence, despite a solid effort, the first Tyranid high fleet was destroyed by the Ultramarines. The Ultramarines' reaction was shock. Their Codex Astartes tactics proved to be relatively ineffective against the ever-adapting Tyranids. Although they did not fear this new alien menace, they were very concerned about what had happened. The Tyranids learnt from their mistake. Throwing their entire fleet at one super defended target wasn't a great idea, when instead they could splinter their fleets, consume minor worlds, then gain enough power to attack greater worlds down the track. This strategy caused them to encounter the Eldar. The Eldar are well suited for fighting Tyranids. They are fast, unpredictable, with powerful weaponry. As such, the Eldar, especially Craftworld Leandon, scored numerous victories against the Tyranids. This caused the Eldar to view the Tyranids as an apex predator, but still a lowly unintelligent animal. They called them the Great Devourer, and they recognized their threat to the galaxy, but they always just assumed they could beat them in any conflict. 
Years later, when Crawford Leandon was nearly destroyed by the Tyranids, whilst Crawford Malantai was completely consumed by them, the Elder would fear and appreciate the danger of the Tyranids for what it was, always choosing to avoid and flee from the Tyranids unless they had to stop them, such as when they were attacking a Maiden world or if their Farseers were like, yo, either we attack this high fleet or 500 years from now they will chow down on our Eldar ass. The Tyranids were able to infect a craft world, causing them all to become gene stealers. However, this is because the craft world saw this as an opportunity to avoid Slaanesh claiming their souls, hence they allowed it to happen. Naturally infecting an Eldar craft world is next to impossible due to their low populations, low reproductive rate, and their keen senses being able to detect an Eldar that has four arms and three tits. In their journeys, the Tyranids ended up attacking the Orc Empire of Octarius, kicking off a fuck huge war between the two Xeno races. At first, the Imperium was happy about this because the two sides would kill each other off. However, it turned out to be the opposite. The Orcs are getting very powerful and huge from the constant fighting, whilst the Tyranids are consuming shitloads of potent biomass, also making themselves more powerful. So whoever wins that war will come out fuck strong, and it does appear that the Tyranids are winning. So how did the Orcs react to this new plaything? Quite well, actually. The Tyranids are pretty fun to fight. They mostly rely on charging into melee with overwhelming numbers, a strategy the Orcs also like to employ. Hence a battle between Tyranids and the Orcs are vicious and bloody enough to make even corn blush. In lore, whenever Tyranids start raining their drop pod spores onto an Orc planet, the Orcs cheer because they're going to get the mother of all battles in. They much prefer fighting Tyranids as opposed to the Necrons, Eldar and Tau, all of whom are known for their hit and run tactics, tactics which the Orcs fucking despise. It's not always fun for the Orcs though. They would rather charge in and fight until one side is victorious. The Tyranids, however, will withdraw and reevaluate their strategy if victory looks unlikely. Hence, wars against Tyranids can become painful if the Tyranids begin to use ambushes, hit and run, assassinations, and feints to overcome the Orc forces. Overall, though, another player in the game of Warhammer 40k is another thing the Orcs get excited about. The Dark Elder and Tyranids don't fight often, mostly because the Dark Elder choose their battles at their own leisure and there is often very little to gain from fighting the Tyranids. In saying that though, they do find them interesting. They once found a dormant hive fleet drifting through space on the way to a target, so they boarded the hive ships, intending to steal various different Tyranids to experiment on or use in their arenas. Unfortunately for the dipshit retard Dark Elder who boarded the hive ships, the ships woke up and they ate the Dark Elder. So I guess they learnt their lesson, but I feel like there didn't really need to be a lesson to learn. Despite this, the Dark Elder quite liked the Tyranids, using them as boss battles for their arena fights. As the Tyranids currently have no way to enter the webway, hence no way to get to Komora, the Dark Elder are completely unthreatened by them. They've actually created a little game for the Tyranids. Whoever can inflict genuine pain to a Tyranid gets a lollipop, and they also figured out how to cut a Tyranid off from the hive mind. This is important as without the hive mind, the Tyranids are just like any other animal except way deadlier. With the hive mind, they can come up with complex strategies, strategies that could result in the Tyranids finding their way into Komora, and that's a huge no-no. But yeah, overall, the Dark Elder just see them as dangerous playthings. The most interesting relationship in 40k is that of the Necrons and the Tyranids. Necrons are a hard counter to the Nids. They don't have morale issues and they don't use the warp, hence the Tyranids' terror combined with their Shadow and the Warp passive ability do absolutely fucking nothing to the Necrons. On top of that, Necron weaponry destroys organic matter on an atomic level, meaning Tyranids can't eat their own dead warriors to replenish their numbers. Going even further, the Necrons are made of metal and have no biomass, hence the Tyranids literally gain nothing from fighting Necrons, even if they were to win. As such, the Tyranids actively avoid fighting the Necrons, deliberately flying past Tomb Worlds to reach way more attractive prey. A number of Necrons see the Tyranids as little more than a minor menace, a non-threat to their empire, with Truzin even capturing an entire high fleet for his museum. However, the Silent King, the true king of the Necron Empire, sees them for what they truly are, the greatest threat the galaxy has ever seen. See, the Silent King spent a lot of time sulking about how he low-key sold his entire race's soul to the Catan. A part of his sulking was adventures out of the Milky Way. On those adventures, he encountered many bad things, but none were as bad as the Tyranids, whom he saw many of. He fought and won entire wars against the Tyranids outside the Milky Way, years before their first scout ships would arrive. Even though the Tyranids would leave the Necrons mostly alone, they could strip the galaxy clean of life. 
This is a no-no for the Necrons, as they need living sentient biomass to remain in the galaxy if they ever want to return to their flesh, blood and soul forms, which a lot of them do. Hence the Necron and Tyranid war isn't so much about killing the other faction, but more so the Necrons wanting to keep the biomass to themselves. So yeah, the Necrons fucking hate the Tyranids because they are a competing apex predator. What about Chaos? How did they react to the Tyranids? Well, the thing about Chaos is that Chaos doesn't really agree with itself very often. Korn likes the fact that there are now more skulls in the galaxy for him to claim, while Slaanesh and Titsnitch are kind of fucking annoyed, because Tyranids won't fall for their schemes and you can't fuck them. Nurgle is like, whatever bro, the Tyranids can still carry his plagues. The average Chaos Space Marine warband and cult are not fans. Numerous Chaos worlds have been consumed by a new Tyranid Hive Fleet that was specifically created to defeat Chaos, so that does kind of suck. On top of that, the Shadow and the Warp ability is super effective against demons, hence any demon that fights against the Tyranids has to do so with a splitting headache the entire time. Whilst the Tyranids likely won't enter the Eye of Terror or the Great Rift, if they consume the rest of the biomass in the galaxy, the Chaos Gods would lose most of their fuel for their strength. After all, if there are no humans around to suffer, then the Chaos Gods will starve to death, so overall, horny boys, no likey spiky death aliens. The Tau fucking loathe the Tyranids. Whilst the Tau aren't happy with the Imperium and other sentient races, the Tyranids cannot even be remotely reasoned with or shown the greater good. They are nothing but a parasite that seeks to consume Tau worlds, hence the Tau hate them. Despite the Tau being a smaller empire, they have been wildly effective when it comes to fighting the Tyranids. Their use of long-range weaponry, battle adaptability, Xeno Auxiliary units and drone soldiers have created a very powerful anti-Tyranid fighting force. When the Tau and the Imperium teamed up against the Tyranids that one time, the Tyranids got smashed as they couldn't adapt to both Tau and human weaponry and tactics. It's gotten to a point where the Tyranids don't even like heading into Tau territory anymore due to how much biomass they keep losing over there. Like the Tau Farsight Enclaves managed to make a fucking virus which caused an entire Tyranid high fleet to break apart and die. That is not the kind of food I'd be looking for. For. So to no one's surprise, the overall reaction to the Tyranids can be summed up by saying, fuck off you dumb dog. Nobody, other than the Orcs and maybe the Dark Elder, are stoked about the newest player to join the game, and that's pretty valid. After all, who the fuck wants to go up against aliens who use bullets that are actually living worms that burrow within you and eat you from inside out? If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month to give you access to a boatload of cheeky, not suitable for work shit. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more reactful content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.